Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike 2.0, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris. Welcome to Notability versus Good Notes V2. Now, I've done this before. In the last round, Notability inched out as my favorite at the time. But since then, Good Notes has made some improvements. So who's gonna win this round? Let the fight begin. Now, both of these are paid apps. If you wanna save some money, be sure to check out my Apple Notes Tips video, which I'll link up down below because it actually does a lot more than you realize. Now, just to get this out of the way, a lot of people seem to feel in the last video that I was biased toward notability and wasn't very fair to good notes. Well, that's called having an opinion or a preference. But like I said, a lot has changed since then. For instance, Notability always had side-by-side -side note support on the iPad, and it used to be a major advantage. But now, thanks to iPad OS, you can view two GoodNotes notes side-by-side -side as well. Okay, just for fun, let's kick this off by mentioning a few things that each Notes app is missing. Notability, which is all about simplicity and streamlining your workflow, doesn't give you folder covers, doesn't give you the option to scroll horizontally, and it doesn't have tab documents like you get in GoodNotes. Good Notes, which aims to transform your iPad into smart digital paper, won't let you record audio while creating notes with real-time playback, and also doesn't offer password-protected notes like you get in Notability. In terms of similarities though, both of these apps support document importing, global search, paper style customization, PDF hyperlinks, iCloud sync, the ability to convert handwriting to text, and left-hand support. And each app also has separate iPhone, iPad, and Mac versions. The first thing I really wanna hit is just the user experience or the design of the workspace because I think for most people, this is ultimately gonna be the biggest thing, just how the digital canvas feels to work in. To me, Notability's interface feels a little bit more straightforward and a little more to the point, whereas GoodNotes interface looks a little bit cooler and also tends to be more customizable. I also personally prefer the default look and feel of Notability's infinitely scrollable interface for individual notes versus GoodNotes sheet of paper approach where you have to keep adding pages the longer your notes get. So let's talk next about the handwriting experience, which is obviously critical to this debate. My ideal digital handwriting experience would consist of a digital ink that doesn't feel or look or seem digital. In the last video, I said I slightly preferred the way the digital ink looked and felt in GoodNotes, and I think that's generally still true, although Notability is just fine. I will say, though, that I really like the highlighting and the way that works and feels and looks in GoodNotes a lot better than I do in Notability. Now, even though these are handwriting-first apps, let me just at least address the topic of typing text for those of you who do want to mix and match. Let me just say, I don't like typing in either app because both treat text like a second class citizen necessarily, and it shows. On the one hand, I guess I do prefer the way that you can put text anywhere in GoodNotes and then reformat it and resize it and change the size of the text box and move it all around. But on the other hand, I think that text and notability actually looks a little bit cleaner. Although I hate how it just overlaps with anything that you've handwritten. When it comes to organizing all your notes, I understand that your personal preference is probably very different than mine, but I tend to like Notability's minimalistic approach that just puts a simple list of folders over on the left and then your notes in those folders over to the right. I understand it looks a little bit boring, but at least you can immediately understand it and there's nothing to learn. I get it though, some people just click with the idea of a notebook, either a paper notebook or a digital one like you get in GoodNotes. And some people just like that visual representation of folders slash notebooks, and that's cool. Again, I personally don't love the idea of page breaks, but to each their own. Now here's something to take note of. If you're an iPad user, then why not check out the Daily Tech After Party? It's our podcast, it's free, it's linked up down below, and you'll love it. Now, before you decide which app to buy, you gotta think into the future to when you built up a huge library of notes and how you're gonna find and access the information in those notes. It's a huge deal. So search is very important. I tend to prefer the way that search works in GoodNotes over Notability because GoodNotes immediately found the handwritten text that I was searching for, whereas Notability was only searching through the titles and the meta info. And I mean, search is something that GoodNotes really promotes on their website pretty heavily, and it's easy to see why. 
Now, if you're gonna be working with PDFs a lot, whether you just wanna import them and mark them up, or you wanna create a template out of them, here's what you need to know. I think a lot of people are gonna prefer PDF import in GoodNotes because not only can you import a PDF and then turn it into a notebook, but you can also use it to create a new paper type, which you can then use as a new paper default. On the other hand though, Notability does let you import PDFs really easily and you can even add them to an existing note, which is kind of nice. And on top of that, it even lets you choose selectively which pages of the PDF get imported. But in Notability, there's no easy way to make a template out of your imports except for copying them over and over and over again. Now, if I had to pick one feature from each app that really sets it apart from the other one, here's what I would pick. In Notability, it's the audio recording and real-time playback. If you wanna re-listen to a lecture, for instance, and see the notes that you took playback while you listen, you can do that. For good notes, I would say it's the notebook covers slash customizability. Some people just like to tinker with settings and options more, and those people will appreciate everything GoodNotes offers there. Now let's talk about the pricing a little bit, because at first glance, the pricing would seem very straightforward if you just look at both in the App Store, but it's really not. On the iPad App Store, you can see that both apps start at under $10. GoodNotes 5 is $7.99, and Notability is $8.99. But whenever GoodNotes comes out with a major new version, you're gonna have to pay for it if history is any guide. So GoodNotes 6, don't expect that to be free. It is worth pointing out though that GoodNotes doesn't offer any annoying in-app purchases. While Notability, on the other hand, makes you pay extra for things like handwriting recognition. Remember when I was talking about search and GoodNotes finding it right away, the handwritten stuff, while Notability doesn't? Well, you gotta pay extra for that. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, now in the second version, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about the new Paperlike is that it's much clearer to watch movies or view content through it when you're not writing or drawing. Paperlike actually gives you more control with your Apple Pencil thanks to that paper-like resistance that it offers. And yes, it really makes a difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who doesn't want that? Paperlike's great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. When you place an order, you're gonna get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can place a Paperlike 2.0 order using the link down in the description. So you might be wondering now, what's my conclusion after this second round of looking at these apps with a fresh pair of eyes, which one would I go with if I had to choose? Honestly, it's so close. And that's why the ratings and rankings in the App Store are so close. While I like the actual handwriting experience and the highlighting experience and the search experience of GoodNotes better, what's really holding me back from just fully endorsing it is the page layout concept. The concept of having to have a bunch of pages rather than being able to infinitely scroll through one long, totally connected note. So in my head, I guess I feel like Notability slightly edges that out, even if I don't like the handwriting quite as much, just because of its simplicity, its straightforwardness, and the infinite notes. Thanks for watching, hope you guys like this. Don't forget to check out Daily Tech on Instagram, on Twitter, and the podcast, of course, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.